what is it that I'm actually building? I think where a lot of artists struggle when it comes to wanting to sell their paintings for that much money is they're kind of just winging it. They're kind of doing this hobby art business model where they're just trying to make money from their art. They're following anyone who's online who's talking about it. They're implementing all these strategies and doing all these things without even really knowing what it is that they're actually building. So welcome back to our Art of Business series. It's been a while since we've done a training, but I am so happy to be back with you guys because this training is all about how you can consistently sell your paintings for 10K plus. And we've been on our trainings before. Some of the stuff maybe not be so new to you. Some of the stuff may be new to you. Um, but my goal is today, we're going to cover the key things that you need to understand. And really, so you understand the foundation you need to build to actually create that and what's really going to break down is into three pillars so if many of you have seen some of you bought our high ticket art blueprint some of you heard me talk a lot about it or received a lot of emails about our high ticket art blueprint but really i'm breaking down really the three pillars that we break down in that blueprint because creating paintings consistently for 10k plus usually involves three key foundations and one thing i talk a lot about is a lot of it starts with intention and really knowing okay what is it that I'm actually building? Because a lot of, I think where a lot of artists struggle when it comes to wanting to sell their paintings for that much money is they're kind of just winging it. They're kind of doing this hobby art business model where they're just trying to make money from their art. They're following anyone who's online, who's talking about it. They're implementing all these strategies and doing all these things without even really knowing what it is that they're actually building. And that's a really big problem. I mean, it could work temporarily, but it's probably not going to get them the results they want, or at least not these types of results because they're not really clear on what it is they're building they're not really clear on who it is they specifically want to attract and whether do they even have the product are they creating the products are they creating the offers that's going to attract those specific people are they the actually people who could attract those types of people so i want to really use this train to dive deep into all these things and all these really dive deep into what all these parts so you guys get a clear understanding of what's involved here I tell people who are live with me on the training um, if they have any questions or there's anywhere they want to dive deeper to let me know so if you want to be one of those people come join us live and um yeah let's just dive in um I want to go through the key things and a lot of these things are things we teach in our high ticket art blueprints so if you want to learn more about that please let me know because it's a 69 page document where I really share so much wisdom of that I've learned from just being seven years in the business, 14, almost 14 years now as a professional artist and really understanding all those key principles that you need to sell your work for that much money. And the beautiful thing is when you master these principles, like you no longer need to do the gallery system. It's like a lot of artists, I think the reason a lot of artists struggle with this stuff is because we're fed so much bullshit. <laughs> we're fed so much bullshit of this is how you go out and make money with your art and whether it's like getting chosen by the right galleries or whether it's getting chosen right by the right collectors or whatever we believe this hierarchy that needs to give us permission to do the thing we actually want to do and when I was going out into the world and I made a commitment very early on that I was going to make money with my art like it was just I saw way too many people I went and I went to art school did my tens of tens upon tens of thousands of hours and really mastering my style really mastering my craft and it was crazy because I saw so many people just like you know they would go to art school to do all this work and then they would ditch their craft because they would get a job and then they would lose sight with that and it just that didn't make sense to me I was like you do all this work just to give it up like it, it didn't make sense so when I started I was on a mission to figure out how to do this and a lot of the information I saw when I was starting out just didn't make sense it didn't it didn't really resonate it resonated on some level but when I really dove deeper like a lot of the strategies that were being put out there didn't really make sense to me and it just was like I knew something was off and when I really dug deeper I ended up discovering why I felt that way like that was intuition very early on telling me there is a better way so in this in this master class in this training today what I'm really going to be diving into what in my experience has been that better way that allows you to skip the line there's no gimmicks there's no get rich quick schemes here it's all about pure mastering pure foundations that actually allow you to create the res this result now and the reason i know this works is for soul i've seen with myself i've seen with clients but we have so many so much evidence of all these incredible luxury brands out there it's like you don't see 
any major luxury brand like Louis Vuitton, Dolce & Gabbana, Mercedes, Lexus, like say, oh, we're going to wait like 10, 15, 20, 30 years before people validate us, before we could start selling high premium ticket offers. They're like, screw that. <laughs> They're like, no, we're going to do that from the start. So we're building a high ticket luxury brand. And you as an artist could do the same exact thing, but it's just having that foundation of understanding, okay, what is it that you're building? What is it that you're creating? Do you have a product that lives up to that price point? That's a big thing. Like it's not just enough to create a brand if the product is like shit. Like I don't mean to say that about anyone, but it means like, you know, no one's gonna, it's not gonna last. The stigma of the luxury brand is not gonna last very long if the product does not live up to what that luxury brand promises. So it's having everything in alignment. That's a big part of what I teach is alignment across all the board, all the boards with what it is you're building, what is you're creating, with your sole purpose, with your product, and with who you are, and making sure everything's in alignment with what it is that you want to create. Does this all make sense? It's a big part of what I teach. I really believe in holistic success. I don't believe in, you know, just one strategy here, one strategy there, because I never really last, at least in my experience. It never really lasts. It's never really sustaining. Maybe it's temporary, but it's not really going to give you what it is that you actually want. Okay. So I just want to pull up my notes because I have some notes. I did a training like this. Um, sim similarly, back, I've done a few ones like these, but one more directly related to this back in September. So I have a bunch of notes that I just want to pull up um, just to guide me to make sure I don't miss anything. So one thing that's really important when it comes to selling your paints for 10K plus is, like I said, the first foundation that's really important to understand is establishing your brand. And the reason I say that, and, I, and when I say establishing your brand, it's establishing a high ticket luxury brand. Because I said, you as an artist are a high ticket luxury brand. It's just most artists don't accept that identity. Most artists don't accept that reality. And when you understand that and you set intention of what you're building, well, then that al really allows you to understand, okay, well, what, if this is what I'm building, this is what I'm creating, whether it's a six figure business, whether it's a multi-million dollar um, empire, whatever it is that you want to build it's like for each person, there's no right or wrong. I work with so many different artists and even though all of them, many of them are felt end up being like spiritual artists and creators into manifestation stuff. And that's just because that's what I'm into. So I just, you know, you attract what you are. We'll dive more into that. But what's interesting is even though all of them are artists, everyone has a brand that is so different. Everyone has a business plan that is so different because each of them are different. Each of them have a different audience to serve. Even each of them have a different message, a different mission, a different a different purpose of what they're meant to do with their brand or business. And I really believe that your brand or business is really kind of the vehicle for you to deliver your purpose, your message, your mission. It's really the vehicle for you to do your life's work, but it's knowing what that is. It's getting really clear on the intention of that. Because when you understand those key things, when you understand like as I've spoken about a lot before, and I talk a lot about in the high ticket art blueprint, you understand the frequency of your brand. I'll give quick synopsis of this. I won't be able to go super deep into this unless someone really has a deep question about this. So I say like going deep into things like the frequency of your brand. So what's like the peak experience that people have with you that you can permeate through everything that you do? The world of your brand, like what is the world that people are buying into? Like these are really important things because it's like this whole idea. I remember I gave this example back in September, but like the whole idea of like this American Girl doll brand. I was never into that, but my sister was. And it was very fascinating. I remember going to the store in New York City and it's like, when people are buying those dolls, they're buying those dolls. And those little dolls are, I don't know, even know how much they are these days. It's somewhere around a hundred dollars, maybe a few hundred dollars. And when people are buying those dolls, it's because they're buying to the world of what those dolls are. They're buying into the brand of what those dolls are. And that's why that brand could sell dolls for that are that expensive and people happily line up to buy them. So you want to understand what is the world that you're creating for your ideal clients and collectors? What is the world that they're buying into? That's why I say intention is so important because that's the one of the big things. Like when people buy from Louis Vuitton, sure, they may buy a purse. They may buy, I know now they sell all kinds of products. I'm not a common customer, but I see, I'm very fascinated by, you know, their, their, their brand and their product lines. And to me, I just find it very fascinating, but the big thing is they're buying into what it means to own a Louis Vuitton product. It's more about that than the actual thing that they could easily buy at Target or American Eagle or whatever, whatever other brands are. There's so many brands out there, but whatever other brand out there, but they buy from Louis Vuitton because what it means to buy from Louis Vuitton. And I think that's really important to understand. What do you, is it going to mean for people to buy from you? Have you established that? 
is that really clear or is it kind of like oh well they should just like it because it's pretty <laughs> those are two very different things what does it mean to buy from you is there any like gravitas or I don't even know if that's the right word but is there anything special about what it means to buy from you what it means to buy from your brand is it like one of these exclusive experiences that like say like if people maybe aren't have millions upon millions of dollars in their bank like saving up to buy from you is something really special or if they do they do because buying from you kind of elevates their status or gives them something that just buying from their local target their local home goods can't give them so that's something that's really important to understand this is why I say intention is so freaking important you need to know what is your building you need to know what is you're creating and set that intention from the start because when you set that intention and then introduce that intention in brand systems so those are systems to actually like make sure that it's consistent across the brand so this is like a consistent strategy consistent in content consistent in how you show up consistent in how what the i teach is called high ticket brand procedures consistent in all those things that allow you to show up that allow you to present yourself that allow people to want to buy into what that brand means to them does that all make sense so it's getting really clear on those things because those things are really important another thing i talk about is the brand personality and I think with artists, it's interesting. So when we talk about luxury brands, some of them have a brand personality, but we don't, you know, more of them are more corporate. So you guys probably aren't corporate because you are personal brands. So I think this is where it's really fun. You kind of get to like play with this um, dichotomy of the brand frequency and your brand personality. It's like when one thing meets one. So like for me, if I think about which is funny, because I've been playing a lot about this with just my brand and my content. It's like for me, it's like divine love, divine expansion, divine discovery meets real time, no bullshit New Yorker. <laughs> That's kind of where I kind of say this is where it meets. And it's true because I don't have time for BS. I call people out for what it is. It's to me, I don't dance around issues. I'm like, let's get to the core. That's just the way I am. But I know at the core, what is it that I want people to experience when they're around my work, when they're in my, when they're rested, in, whether it's working with me in terms of a coaching mentorship or buying any product for me, or whether it's buying a painting, I want them to experience that divine love, the feeling of like, oh, this is what life is actually about. Oh, like those things that we as humans get so disconnected with. So it's understanding what is that for you? And one thing I talk about a lot in the blueprint with brand personality it's really important to know your brand personality because if you know it, you're going to allow yourself to express it in your work. Because that's the thing, your work really should be a direct extension of who you are. And the beautiful thing is the more you elevate, the more your work elevates. And that's how you know you're up-leveling to actually attract the people. You're becoming the person, you're becoming the magnet that could attract those people into your world. Just reading the chat. I spent so much time in the corporate world. <laughs> Well, the good thing, Roland, is you are now free from the corporate world. <laughs> you get to show people everything that you are. Some people, it may not be for everyone, and that's okay. That's totally okay. Like, I'll be honest, there's some artists out there winning it big time. Are they for me? Not at all. Like, I don't even follow them just because, not out of disrespect for them, just because just what they post, it just is not my cup of tea. But they're killing it. They're doing, they're doing incredible. They're doing incredible in their businesses. They're doing incredible. They have all these people who love buying for them, who are paying high ticket premium prices to work with them. And they're full on with their brand personnel. They're full on being who they are. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like, you're here to serve very specific people. You're here to serve very specific people. And that's a big part of your brand, knowing who those people are. Because if you know who those people are, then you know how to get in front of them. Then you know how to speak to them. Then you can make sure your brand's not like vanilla, trying to people please everyone, try to speak to everyone. Because we know if, we, if we're ever trying to sell to everyone, what are we really doing? Like barely selling to anyone because we're giving no reason, especially when you want to sell high ticket. People have to have a really strong reason why to work with you over someone else. For some people, 10K is nothing. But for a lot of people, it's it's a high, it's a high, it's a high ticket price. So it needs to mean something significant to them. For them, for them to buy from you over some over someone else, so you need to know who that person is. It's like I was playing where um, 
we have a new program out coming out called Art Business Upgrade, and we have a whole section just on an ideal client. And I was actually tweaking it last night, and I was talking about, you know, with ideal client, a lot of people think like, oh, I want to sell high ticket paintings. So let me just get in front of all the millionaires and billionaires that I know. Let me just get in front of them. And the thing is, are all those millionaires and billionaires your true ideal clients? Some of them maybe yes, but is every person who has a ton of money are they your true your true soulmate clients, the people you could serve better than anyone else? Like this is why I say intention is so important. Like I always lead with intention because if you lead with intention, then it becomes much easier to make sure everything you're doing, you're going to grow your business so much faster because you're only going to focus on serving these people. You're not going to hold back because you know if you're fully who you are, your true ideal clients and collectors are going to resonate with that. They're going to resonate with who you actually are. It's not like you have to put on a mask. If this is who I'm pretending to be. Like, no, it's <laughs> that's not authentic. That's not real. Like, of course, we want you to elevate. We want you to step into that next level version of yourself. But it's actually of who you actually are. It's like when you're elevating as a human being, you're becoming more of who you actually are because you're taking away all the crap, all the muck that tells you that you aren't that. Does that make sense? So that's really the first pillar. The first section is really knowing what it is you're building. What's the world you're creating? What's the world that people are buying into? That's the first really big thing you need to master. Because this is like, I talk about external work and internal work. That's the majority of the external work. And when you have that down and then you have brand systems that beautifully, I think the word I, I'm trying to think it's like, just execute the best word <laughs> that beautifully execute that idea. That's where you have consistency. And when you have consistency, that's when it's much easier to magnetize those people because they see it and they're like, ooh, that feels really good. I want to be more of that because it gives them something they're looking for. It gives them something they're seeking. Everyone who buys from a luxury brand or a high ticket brand, it's because those brands give them something they're looking for. It's because those brands give them something they're seeking. So that's the first pillar. I want to say the first external pillar. So the second the second pillar really is, okay, let's talk about the principles of art, what it takes to create a great painting. Because that's the thing. It's like, if you want to sell your paintings at $10,000 plus, you need to believe with every fiber of your being that they're worth $10,000 plus. If you don't believe it, it's not going to work. <laughs> so this is where it's actually looking at like, okay, are you creating art that people would value at that price point. And this is an interesting conversation because art is such a subjective thing. But I, as I talk about in the blueprint, there's a few key principles that I really believe you need to master. And when you master those principles, they make all the difference. So one of the key principles that I talk about the most, because the only reason I talk about it the most is because I've had a, I had a professor who really attacked me on this a lot. So it's like, I kind of forget it. And this really is mastering the space in your painting, really understanding how you're taking people back into space. And I give so many examples of what this actually looks like, because it could mean so many different things for so many different styles of painting. So sometimes it could just be like, if you're like someone like Joan Mitchell, and I give an example of a drawing she did where like very simple charcoal line drawing, someone could easily call it a doodle, but it's probably in a museum somewhere from what I know. And, um, you could see how like simply she creates space by creating more opacity up front and then creating a simple line that goes back into space and to giving less detail. Like that's one way to create space in a very simplified way. Another way, way to create space is through aerial perspective. And like literally if you're more of a traditional painter, um, you don't need to be a traditional painter to do this. I mean, that's why I say it's so dependent on the kind of art you create, but knowing, okay, how are you taking people back into space by your use of shape, by your use of line, by your use of color, by your use of contrast, by your use of like saturation <laughs> and knowing those key things of how you're bringing people back into the painting. I just wanna see if there's any key things um, that I meant that I mentioned. Um, yeah, another way could be just by the way you blend colors, the way you lay one color on top of the other. I mean, there's so many different ways to create space, but it's knowing how am I taking this viewer back into space in the paintings? One thing you have to remember, like high ticket luxury paintings, like I remember I spoke about this back in September. It's like, think about the paintings you go, when you go to a museum and you go see paintings in person, why do people go to museums? It's the experience. It's the experience when they step in front of this magnificent piece of art that that the experience that that painting takes them into you want to create that same experience with your art 
that's why it's like there's like this is why it's like elevating your work is such a huge piece of the puzzle making sure does my art create that experience my apart if my painting was in a museum would it cost someone to stop and just want to take it in and this is isn't forever that, that this what i'm saying this doesn't mean for every single person but would it cause my true ideal so many client and collector to stop and want to take it in because we're not selling to everyone. So I just want to keep that in. Maybe more people will resonate. I mean, for each person, everyone's going to resonate with something more than another because we all are individuals with different interests and different, you know, things we love. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's a really big thing is understanding you're here to create an experience. Your paintings are here to create an experience. Are you effectively delivering on that experience your paintings are here to create? So that's the first thing. The next thing is knowing how to navigate the person's eye around the painting. So like I said, it all goes back to intention. So this is creating areas of visual interest. And you can play with this with the variety of sizes and line, texture, brush stroke to create interest throughout the painting. Are you effectively guiding the viewer throughout your painting? Are you creating experience so they continue to move their eye throughout the painting? Or is it kind of just a flat picture? So this is where intention is really important. Am I delivery am i really working with that experience the first thing we spoke about is space the next thing we talk about is like okay how are you causing that viewer's eye to go in a circle and it doesn't have to be a literal circle but how are you causing that viewer's eyes to move out around the painting in the painting out of the painting like how are you really creating that experience this is why i say intention is so important it all goes back to like everything you're gonna hear me say always go back to intention <laughs> yeah for ads why not yeah roland do you want to talk about that for a second and creating that intention with ads? Not really. Okay. <laughs> no worries. No, but I, I'm I, sorry. I, no, it's okay. But no, I, um... I think it's so fascinating. It's like you understand that in terms of graphic design. Oh, okay. It felt manipulative. That's why I didn't want to talk about it, I guess. Okay. Um, okay. Well, but this... yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily manipulative yeah. because in an art piece, I guess, now that I'm thinking it through, because how else are they going to understand it it's just yeah when you said it it made me think of the advertising thing yeah yeah and then an ad it's yeah. not a journey it's a yeah a bullet you're what do you call it when a missile is targeting it's targeting yeah, yeah it's targeting yeah <laughs> it's manipulating but in art i'm just connecting that okay thank you yeah no but that, that's really <laughs> cool it's like you're noticing there's a similarity there but the intention is different the intention then was for targeting to make sales for that company. And one thing to say, there's nothing wrong with that. It probably just didn't resonate with you at that moment in time. So that's fine. That's totally fine. It's like, that's why I say some things resonate with some people, some things don't. It's not necessarily that there's right or wrong. It's just what resonates with you. But with art, like how for you, you want to use that to create the experience. Like think about it, you're creating from a place of love now, not from a place of manipulation. Because you know, the deeper experience you create, mm -hmm. the more you allow someone to experience more of who they actually are. Or whatever that mission, whatever that core why or mission behind your work, behind your brand, behind your paintings, whatever that core calling is. You allow people to experience more of that. Does if that I don't learn anything else today from you, that was priceless. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that. So good. I love this. Cool. So that's a really big thing like creating that experience and creating that experience through the mission, the vision, the goal, the why behind why you're building this in the first place. Because like I said, your painting is the product of your brand. So if your brand is to create like divine love or whatever, every person's going to have a different word or a different thing of why they're here to do the work they're here to do. And there's no right or wrong. Each of you have a soul purpose. Each of you have a soul mission and it's a beautiful thing, but you need to know what that is and make sure those paintings actually speak to that. Allow those paintings to be ex the expression of that. And if you're truly creating a work that's a direct extension of who you are, they will be. They totally will be. But that's why I say it's knowing all these, it's being really clear on these things. That's why I love talking about branding. I love talking about all these details because they're all interconnected. Like there's no, there's really no disconnects in life. If you really look deep, they really aren't. Everything's interconnected. But it's having that, inter that intention being interconnected through everything that you do. That's really the biggest thing here. Okay. So the next thing when it comes to art 
is really, and this is something I talk about in the blueprint as well, is really making sure, and hopefully most of you guys understand this, but really making sure you're using a wide variety of brush sizes, palette knives to add the, vari the variety of the size of marks that you're creating. Because of course, a dynamic painting has, dyna like has, has dynamic, you know, visual aspects that really create that visual interest. So making sure I know I used to be someone who used to, like, I had my favorite brush. And I use the same brush all the time. <laughs> I mean, we're like, we can tell you're using the same brush. And the reason they could tell that and they point that out to me is because I'm preparing my viewer from having the extraordinary experience that they could have because I'm not creating variety. We as humans, we do like variety. If we had to do the same exact thing every single day in the same exact way, we get really bored. So how can you really create that variety to create the, to make that experience even more extraordinary for your viewer? So that's more of a technical thing, but it's an important thing when we're talking about creating high ticket art. We want to talk about all the key things that are involved. The next thing, and there's a few things I recommend. In the blueprint, I talk about certain brushes I recommend. Like my the Blick Mega brushes are great because most artists, the one thing I discovered, because I've worked with artists as a as a teacher's assistant in college, I've worked with artists in my programs now. And a lot of it we talk about painting and creating like what they could do to elevate their paintings. And more often I find this most artists are using brushes that are way too small. That's usually more the problem than brushes that are too big. <laughs> because we like things that we can control. <laughs> so um, such thing as too much variety. You know, that's such a great question. Um, I would say, you know, in your question rolling about too much variety, I'd say if it loses, if it, if it doesn't, if it takes away from the experience, then yes. If it takes away from the experience, the intention you're here to create with the painting, then yes. But if it supports it, then no. And I think like, this is where things are very nuanced. Like, it's like, okay, let's look at the work of art where there is so much variety and see like, okay, does it make sense for what is that we're building? Does it make sense as a composition? Does it make sense as a work of art of, of its own? Does it speak to what it is we're trying to create here? So that's a great question. Okay, okay, okay. Do you have a follow-up question? No, <laughs> I thought I did, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So usually I'm a big fan of like the Blick Mega brushes. Those are a few examples. And I talk about the ones, my favorite ones there. Um, if you're creating big paintings, like I do sometimes, and you are like our landscape painter, like badger hair brushes could be great. Those are not as easy to get, but I have a few resources. If that's something you're interested in, just let me know. I could tell you where you could get those because um, they keep changing depending on how much brands sell them. Okay, so the last part that when it comes to that I wanted to cover today, there's way more I dive into the blueprint, but just because we only have so much time today, the last thing I wanna talk about that's really important to understand is sharing and communicating your visual voice in your work. So people know it's distinctly yours. So there are so many ways to find your visual voice, but the best way I like to say is your visual voice is when you take a pen to a piece of paper and you just start drawing with no real plan and then you see what shows up. That's your immediate visual voice. It's like what you create and you don't even have to think about it. That's just an extension of who you naturally are. And that's something that you develop. It's like one of those things, like it's kind of this idea we all have gifts, but it's one thing to have a gift. It's another thing to turn that gift into a skill. There's that thing. So it's figure out, okay, what is the visual voice that when I don't think, when I take a pen to a piece of paper, excuse me, when I take a pen to a piece of paper and I just start drawing, what comes out? What shows up? If I give myself 10 minutes to doodle, what shows up? Great. That's your visual voice. It's knowing how to take that visual voice and then create an experience with it. That's a big thing. Because when you have that visual voice and you're creating art that's distinctly yours, you're creating art that's a direct extension of who you are. And when you create that with intention, then that art's going to directly communicate what your brand is here to express. And that art can look like so many different things. It doesn't mean like, oh, if I paint flowers now, if I ever had to be painting flowers. No, it could be, it could turn up, visual voice could translate into so many different things. It all goes, it goes back to like your journey as an artist. It's going to look very distinct to you. It's just allowing yourself to play with your visual voice and your visual voice. It should just like, you don't even have to think about it. It just shows up. And then you see how that evolves because you're going to evolve as a human. It goes back to this whole idea. And it's so funny because this is a practice. I've been practicing my, with myself in every area of my life, but this whole idea of allowing. That's a really big thing. This whole idea of allowing versus trying to force something. 
and allowing, trust me, that's a concept that will get you very far in life in so many areas of your life. And we'll talk about that briefly in a second. But that's a really big thing, knowing what your visual voice is, knowing what your distinct voice is. Can't work on that as well. Yeah, allowing is a big thing. And we don't have time to talk, go deep into that today, but a lot of it goes back to ego and understanding how ego tries to control us and really understanding how we all have egos and we don't often realize how they're running our lives because we don't know anything outside of it. We lose sight of, oh, this is what true divine love feels like. This is what not worrying feels like. This is what, so we're so controlled by like, oh, I have to do it this way and this thing. And like, this is your ego. And it's learning how to disconnect and, you know, you know, stop giving it so much power and just allow. Just allow yourself to be the channel for what you're called here to do to flow onto that piece of paper or to flow onto that canvas or to flow onto whatever your medium is. That's a big thing. So the last part, so that's what I'm going to cover in terms today of like part two of the pillars. So the part three of the pillars, which is honestly, I discovered is probably one of the most important parts because this is where the real change, the real shifts happen, is really stepping into your brand, becoming the person who feels confident in selling your work for $10,000 each, $10,000 a piece or more. So this is where there's that internal work. There's that internal piece. And this is where, in my experience, because I've just seen it myself and with my clients, this is where the real transformation happens. I've seen people, and with whether they're an artist or they're not an artist, who did so much work on this end that they were able to charge for one offer over 100K and they attracted people who were happy to pay for it. Because they were so, they changed what they were in alignment with. They changed how they saw themselves. And this is where I say, this is probably all these pieces, like it's like they're all integrated. You can't ignore one. Like you need all of them to work beautifully together. But this is the part that makes the most difference because you could do all these other things. But if you don't live up to all the other work you're doing, if you don't see yourself in that light, it's going to be really hard to stay there. It's going to be really hard to attract the kind of collectors that are happy to pay those prices. Because one thing you have to understand, we're all magnets. We all have electromagnetic fields. We're always attracting who we are. We can never run away from that. It's just the truth. If you really look at who's you're attracting in your life and you see what's going on internally and you really look, really take a look, like I'm really honest with yourself, it all makes sense. You can never hide from you. So it's like, okay, if I don't like who I'm attracting or I don't like what I'm seeing, what within me needs to shift? What within me needs to elevate? This is a really important and huge piece about that because this is where a lot of artists don't do this work. There's some who are, the world's changing because people are learning about manifestation. People are learning about all these things. They're learning about personal development. It's a beautiful thing, but it's one thing to know about these things. It's another thing to live these things and constantly doing the work, constantly be healing the stuff that's telling you that you're not who you actually are or taking you away from the divine essence of who you actually are, who preventing you from actually leveling up and being that person today. Because you all already are that. You just haven't accepted that yet. Roland, do you have a question? Millions. <laughs> Millions? Okay. Uh, but no, I'm sorry. No, oh, no you're, you're totally fine. So those are really the three essential pillars. When it comes to being able to sell your paints for 10K plus consistently, those are the three big pillars you have to master. So I'll just do a quick synopsis. Part one really understand what you're building, really understand the brand, understand the world it is that you're creating, and then creating those brand systems. But it's having that clarity first. Part two is creating the art that lives up to that. Creating the art, that's a direct extension of who you are. Create art that provides an experience. Like if you're true, so my clients and collectors saw a piece of art in your museum, they would just be mesmerized by it for like minutes, possibly even hours. Like each person's different. <laughs> it depends on how deeply something touches someone. And the third piece is you elevating up into that. So those are the three big key things that if you master this, you will go very far. If you want to dive deeper into each of these three things, one thing I've spoken a lot about this week, we just released, well, two weeks ago, we released a high ticket art blueprint. This week, we have a Cyber Monday week special where it's only $22 and 22 cents. So if you really want to dive deep, deep into this and learn how this applies to your life, well, it's $22, like, buy the blueprint it's like it's worth every penny if you actually do the work <laughs> yeah Christy oh thanks I'm so happy it's so good thank you well that's awesome because we really dive so deep Roland I will send you the link so you can get access to it so 
if you're watching live or you're watching the replay, if you want the link to the blueprint, just ask me. I will happily send it to you. Um, but it is pure gold. There's so much love and intention that goes into that. And we're constantly optimizing it because I'm a crazy perfectionist. One thing you'll learn about me, I like go crazy for over perfecting things. So we're constantly optimizing it and trying to make it as amazing as it possibly could be to give you that transformation that you want. So that's the first thing. The next thing I want to announce before we go into Q&A, we have about five minutes left for Q&A, is we're doing a really special three-day live event next week. So um, I was just, there's no such thing as, <laughs> I will ask you more about that, Roland, in a second. So we're doing a three-day live event next week called Luxury Brand Upgrade. When you get the blueprint, you immediately get a free ticket to sign up for it. And we've had some tech glitches. If for some reason it's not letting you get in for free, just let us know. We'll fix it. We'll make sure you get in. Uh, but that's happening next week. So for those of you who want to learn, okay, how can I really up my what I'm doing my business into a high ticket luxury brand we touched a little bit on today we'll be diving much deeper into that next week so that's going to be a really incredible event that I highly recommend you guys attend so if you want more details about that as well please let us know because this is what we're here to do we're here to help you guys elevate and create things in a way that's easy <laughs> not to say it's always going to be easy a lot of this internal work all this elevating it's a lot it's deep work but you'll realize, oh, I could do things in a way more aligned way that could come to me in a very easy way because every piece is in alignment with what I'm actually here to do what, and what you're actually here to do on this planet. So we have about five minutes left. So for the people who are live with me on Zoom, like the floor is yours. Like what, what questions do you have? Uh, I have so much to unpack from yeah. that PDF. Like yeah. I think that's going to be my December project. I feel like that's going to like, I have a lot of deep diving because so, yeah. some answers put some questions and I have answers for yet, yeah. but I'm going to jump ahead. Yeah. Once we do have these, all these things in alignment, where do we find these people? Do you talk about like where, where they are for us yeah. to get in front of? So the first thing is knowing who your people are. And mm -hmm. once you know who your people are, it's like, okay, well, where are they hanging out? Where are they hanging out? Where are they hanging out online and offline? So that's a really big thing. It's like, okay, well, what communities are they hanging out on, on Facebook, on Instagram? Like, who has these audiences? It's actually going to like, okay, where are they hanging out? And then offline, are there any events that they hang out? Are there any places where they congregate? Like, seek those things out. It's like, it's nothing complicating, but it's actually knowing. It's like, these are my people. Where can I hang out with them to get in front of more of them? What do you just go there and be weird and people come up to you and they're like, you're an artist, aren't you? <laughs> or how do you do that? What's, what's that well, look like? It, it really depends. Like I always think like so much of business is relationship building. That's really what business is. And I remember back in the days pre-COVID, I used to network all the time and I loved it because it was like, we're just making friends. It's so much fun. <laughs> so, so much of business is just relationship building and getting to know your people and getting to know how you could serve them. And then when you know how to serve them and it's like you give so much value then it's like okay let well, me create an offer that's going to help you get what you want because what is money money's just an exchange of value that's all it is it's like money's become something like back in the old days before money was what money is today before money was a currency if people need something like so i'm going to use this example it's funny i'm a vegetarian but this is the first example that comes to mind if someone's like oh i need meat to eat and someone made arrows um they would make and they would trade the arrows maybe for the hunter to get the meat it's like that was their currency at the moment they would trade one thing or another that was their exchange of value but at a certain point the person may be like oh i have enough meat i don't like i don't need more so he's like well how else can i get more arrows than i need okay well we need to create a form of currency to do that that's where money comes in so money's just an exchange of value so it's just getting to know who your people are knowing how to serve them so you know how to make offers that are actually going to help them get what they want does that make sense Cool. What other questions do you guys have? Um, when you say brand, does brand something, is brand something that kind of evolves over time or is yeah. that something that you? Yeah. So a brand, you know, it's such a good question. And I would say, yes, it does. But as long as it's in line with who you actually are, things will get more evolved and refined because you'll have more clarity. But the intention typically doesn't change. It could, but if you're creating a brand directly from who you are in this moment, from where you're going, like things will evolve, 
trust me, so much has evolved within my brand and my business in the past two years because it's just, they've, it's evolved out of clarity. But typically it's not going to go so far off the map unless you were off the map from the beginning. Usually it's going to evolve and just getting more specific or with more clarity and more intention because you're, you have more awareness because you're going, you're as a human being, if you're living, if you're doing, <laughs> what is it? like if you're doing it right, and I don't want to say if there's right or wrong, you're constantly growing and evolving and expanding. So as you grow and evolve and expand, of course, like things are going to evolve, but at the end of the day, if everything's from an alignment, like it's very rare that you're going to evolve and just things are going to completely drastically change from what you initially set the intention for. Maybe it's just the path changes or there's a little more nuances that you just didn't have clarity when you were starting out, that that'll become more clear, more specific. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Especially the whole, when I was going to the blueprint, the yeah. first thing that caught my eye was the, the idea of the branding. And because yeah. I was always confused with how much, is it, is it something you start with that you really are connected to, you want to do, or is it something that just go do some research on a bunch of websites and see what people are buying? No, so don't go so, there. That's go. That's yeah. coming from the ego. Go from you first. Mark the right. so, later. Yeah, it's it's helpful from that direction that it it provided that clarity, the the blueprint. So. Oh, good. I'm really help. Really glad that gives me more specifics of maybe if we create an, of 2.0 or 4.0 version of the blueprint to make that more specific. So I'm so happy you asked that. But yeah, it's always it comes from you first. It comes from you word first. Mark your research comes later. So it's first to understand what is it that I'm building, creating? What is my soul calling? And how can I deliver that soul calling through my brand that I'm creating? How can I create a brand that creates a container that allows to express that soul calling? Does that make sense? So if your yeah. soul calling is, and I'm not going to say, is like to be a light in the world or to elevate consciousness, or I, I, I'm just going to throw things at like, words that I use, but if those are your soul callings, you're going to use your brand to, to, to serve through that, to serve that soul calling, to express that soul calling, to create offers that like to deliver on that soul calling. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then market research does have a place, but often has a place once you have so much clarity of this is what I'm here to do on this planet. Okay. Let me see what else is in the market now that speaks to that, that speaks to that ideal client. Usually by the time you're doing market research, you have so much clarity of what it is you want to build. And now it's just seeing, okay, where do I fit in the market with this thing I want to create? How can I deliver in the market in a place that maybe hasn't been delivered on yet? Or maybe there's a missing link. And this is where I say talking to people, knowing your true ideal clients is really powerful because you get to see, well, what's still holding them back? What are those blocks? Why are they still not where they want to be yet? And that's where you get to show up. And this is where you get to deliver. And this is where you get to serve. Um, I'm just reading, Roland. All I have for the third pillar is three, sharing your distinct vision and got lost in the, the density of the... <laughs> okay, tell me more. <laughs> tell me more, Roland, what you mean by that. We have a minute and then I have to go. Um. Can you just sum up the third pillar? I guess maybe that's what I'm asking. Sure. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the third <laughs> pillar is stepping into the brand. It's you becoming the person who could attract those people. It's just that whole idea. You always attract who you are. You can never hide from that. So if you're attracting people who tell you that your work is too expensive, that means take a look at yourself and your relationship with money. Take a look at yourself and what seems normal to you, what seems too expensive to you. Because they're just reflecting right back. Like everyone around us is really reflectors. Everyone around us really is a mirror. It really is. Like it's kind of crazy, but you will see that. I actually discovered that because I attended um, a, mind, a huge Mind Valley event over the summer where there was like, and I haven't been around that many people pre COVID. So it was very like overwhelming for me, especially I'm naturally a projector. I'm like an extrovert introvert. So for me, it was just like a lot of energy. And it was crazy. It was like everyone was a mirror. And it was interesting because a lot of times I didn't like that mirror. And it was like a huge wake up call. It's like, ooh, <laughs> this is work. This tells you this is work I have to do. If I don't like what I'm seeing, it's not them, it's me. It's, this is the work that I need to do to align, <laughs> to align with who it is that I want to attract, with who it is, with who it is that I want to bring into my experience. 
So we can never hide from that truth. Does that make sense? So I really, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very happy to hear that role. It's probably because it's a lot of epiphanies or you know this is the truth and it's like being brought right to your face right now. It's like, oh, this is the truth that maybe I've been ignoring or I haven't been living. And now I'm seeing it's it's it. the it's the truth that I say I believe. Yeah. And now you're reflecting it back at me. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that I don't believe it. But I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, well, I it's, say I do, but yeah. I, it's not 100 you percent. Know, yeah. Well, what it is, is consciously you believe it, but subconsciously deep down you don't. It's one of those things like, yeah, I know this, but why is my nervous system telling me a different story? Like, oh, I know there's all this abundance in the world, but why is it that my nervous system feels lack? It's because there not, isn't complete alignment yet. So it's bringing everything to alignment. And this is what a lot of the inner work is. So anyways, we're over time now, but I want to thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Roland, I will send you a link for the blueprint. If anyone wants the blueprint, the sale lasts until tomorrow. So if you still want it for 2222, please reach out. Also, feel free to reach out because the event next week, we're going to, if you enjoyed today's lesson, we're going to dive much deeper into that in our three-day event next week. So make sure you attend live for luxury brand upgrade. And you have a bonus. If you're live all three days, you actually get a free luxury brand guide, which we're only giving to people who show up live all three days. So um, ask us about that event as well. So we can give you the, your free ticket to it. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for you guys because you guys like you're here to do the work. And I love what working with people who like intentionally sign up I'm like yes I'm here to do the work I'm here to transform my life I'm here to create the brand that I'm here to create so for me that's really exciting when I see people like step up to the plate and they're like let's do this so I want to thank you guys for being here with me today have an amazing day and hopefully I will see you guys next week at our live event okay thanks Samantha my pleasure bye guys Thank you so much for watching this training. If you enjoyed this training, please like and subscribe below. And if you're an arson creator and you want to turn this calling, this endeavor of yours into a multiple six to seven figure business, make sure you download our free artist and creative entrepreneur seven figure blueprint. Access yours in the description below. Now come join me in our next training right over here.